Welcome to our uh, monthly uh, webinar series. I am Pankaj Jain, uh, VP Software Services at Synergia. Before we get started, I'd like to go over some quick housekeeping. During the webinar, feel free to ask any questions through the chat box on your GoToWebinar window. We will try to get to all of them as appropriate. The webinar topic will run about 45 to 50 minutes. We will reserve the last 10 minutes to address all of your questions. Please note that the webinar is being recorded. Tomorrow you will receive an email with a direct link to the recording and slides. With that covered, allow me to introduce today's topic. IPaaS use cases, accelerating hybrid cloud and big data integration. I'm sure many of you are wondering what is IPaaS and thinking, oh no, not another acronym. Well, Integration Platform as a Service is becoming widely recognized as a key enabler of digital transformation in the enterprise. It is my great pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Darren Cunningham. He is the Vice President Marketing at SnapLogic, offering uh, industry's first unified data and application integration platform as a service. Darren has over 15 years of experience running product and corporate marketing for data integration, analytics, and cloud computing companies, including Informatica, Lucid Era, Salesforce, and Business Objects. Now over to you, Darren. Thank you, Pangaj. It's uh, great to be here, and thank you to the uh, Synerzip team for the opportunity. It's a great partnership, and um, I think this is a very very interesting topic. It's getting a lot of attention right now. So let's uh, let's dive right in. So today's agenda, what I put together um, working with the Synerzip team is um, let's just back up and look at you know what is this thing called IPaaS, this new acronym. Um, people are often referring to it now as, as a hybrid integration platform or HIP. Uh, so there's always new acronyms, right? Um, what are the new integration requirements? I'm going to introduce you to SnapLogic and talk about some of the use cases we see for integration platform as a service. Um, talk about you know why SnapLogic and some um, customer example, and then point to some next steps. So um, we want to really introduce you to this topic and hopefully give you some things to think about as you all you know try to tackle some of the, the new and old uh, integration challenges in the enterprise. So let's look at the definition. And I have to give credit to Gartner here. Um, Gartner started talking initially about cloud integration. Um, and then the lead analyst in this category, uh, Massimo Penzini, um, really started emphasizing and writing about this, this new category called IPaaS. Uh, integration platform as a service is a suite of cloud services enabling development, execution, and governance of integration flows connecting any combination of on-premises and cloud-based processes, services, applications, and data within individual or across multiple organizations. Now, that's the Gartner definition. You know, at SnapLogic, we think that data, you know, really has been kind of added to this category and is often sort of an afterthought. There's a lot of uh, people that, that really look at IPaaS as more classically application integration or really coming from that enterprise service bus SOA world. We think that there's a real convergence between application and data integration. So bringing in some of the ETL, you know, data integration uh, requirements uh, and capabilities into really a, a converged platform that we'll talk about today. So the fundamental premise here is that big data, hybrid cloud environments are making yesterday's approaches to integration obsolete. As we like to say, you know, don't let your legacy integration technology be your legacy, right? I mean, a lot of the tools that were built in the 90s and early 2000s um, are well suited for the, the needs of those of that era or those eras. Um, very much as more of a structured um, data type of world. And now we see, you know, our customers are, are rapidly adopting cloud-based applications, right? Salesforce, Workday, ServiceNow, um, the list goes on. You know, most enterprise IT organizations have, have adopted a cloud-first mindset um, and, and really have to now justify bringing in anything on-prem 
um, as they move more of their infrastructure to Azure and, and you know, from Microsoft or AWS. Um, so that is a huge shift on the application and networking side, infrastructure side, and then on the data front, it was, you know, I was at Business Objects for a long time, and it was, a, you know, a pretty um, uh, stable world of get your ETL, get your relational database, and buy your business intelligence tools, you know, Business Objects, Cognos, and the like. Now that world has been turned on its head. Data visualization is, is super hot with vendors like Tableau. Um, we see a huge shifting in the infrastructure for analytics, um, both in terms of you know, moving to the cloud, um, things like Amazon Redshift um, and Azure SQL Data Warehouse, but also um, you know, Hadoop, of course, and Spark, and, and all that's happening from a data processing perspective. So very interesting time that we think have made some of the legacy approaches to application data integration obsolete. So just to drill down on that a little bit, and I probably don't need to tell you all in today's um, uh, webinar, that you know, years ago Mark um, Andreessen wrote, software is eating the world, now uh, data is eating the world, right? Um, from now until 2020, uh, the digital universe will, be, will double every two years. It's just it's an amazing time as you think about you know, what the Internet of Things is going to bring to the mix uh, in terms of data volumes, right? The exhaust of the Internet and these mobile devices um, not to mention, you know, Pokemon Go and what that's doing from a, a data explosion perspective. So the digital user universe um, is experiencing 50-fold growth from the beginning of 2010 to the end of 2020. Um, it's just just an amazing time for data, which is driving some of the the changes to how organizations manage data, right? Our, you know, SnapLogic CEO uh, and founder Gaurav Dillon um, happened to found a company called Informatica that some of you may know. Um, and he was telling me recently, you know, in, in, in you know, 2000, 2001, he used to fly around and shake hands with customers that had a terabyte of data. Uh, imagine, right? Fast forward to today and, you know, you can get, you know, a terabyte of data in minutes in some of these, uh, these data centers. So you wouldn't want to put some of this, all, you know, all of this new data into some of those traditional, you know, enterprise data warehouse um, systems just for cost purposes alone, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't work. But um, we'll talk more about that in today's presentation. Um, one of the things that we've seen, and this is, I think, a good chart from Gartner, um, it talks about big data strains traditional techniques. So it's not just a matter of the technology uh, shifting, it's also the skills, the, the skills change. And, and there's this, you really, this is you know, becoming a barrier to adoption. Uh, if you look at you know the big data challenges, what are your organization's top hurdles or, or challenges with big data? Uh, right up there from with you know determining value and risk and governance is you know, skills. You know the, the shortage of you know how do you keep up? Some of these Apache projects they move so quickly. You know one minute it's MapReduce, then it's Spark, now it's Flink, right? So this this world is is moving so quickly. How do you, you know, thinking that you can just hire more of the best developers out there to solve your, your problem is, um, is, isn't going to scale, which is where, you know, a technology platform like a SnapLogic comes in to help future-proof you uh, from some of those changes and giving you more of a, um, you know, a steady-state approach to, to managing, uh, and, you know, and, and monitoring and, and really, you know, aggregating and transforming that data. So, uh, interesting time on the data side, on the um, cloud front. You know, hybrid is certainly the new normal. You know, you know, sometimes in Silicon Valley we can get a little ahead of ourselves, and we think that everybody is is, is super cloudy, but it's certainly moving in that direction. Um, hybrid is certainly the new normal, where you know, most organizations have have dipped their toes in and have at least you know one cloud application like a Salesforce.com. Um, you know, but doesn't mean that the, the, the legacy, um, you know, some companies we work with, uh, certainly, you know, even, you know, in the public sector, there's, there's mainframe that still is out there, right? So how do you, you know, respect this sort of hybrid reality of today as that then moves even more towards multi-cloud, where it's not just, you know, putting everything in, in um, AWS, you might have a mix of, um, of, of um, providers that are going to deliver that uh, cloud computing capability. So this quote from Gartner, multi-cloud strategies will become common for 70% of organizations by 2019, 
which is up from le uh, less than 10% today, which is uh, late last year, 2015. So interesting times in terms of you know, cloud adoption um, and that shift of, of you know, your data, your applications. We're seeing more and more of Hadoop and, and some of the big data technologies moving to the cloud as well to take advantage of that scale um, and some of the economics uh, as well of the cloud. So we've written, recently uh, written a summary of what we, we at SnapLogic see as 10 requirements for modern integration. Uh, and this is a whole presentation in, in and of itself, so I'll just give you the headlines. Um, one is application integration is done primarily through REST and SOAP services. Uh, large volume data integrations available to Hadoop-based uh, data lakes or to cloud-based data warehouses, which we'll talk more about today. Um, we think that integration has to support the continuum of data velocities, not just batch you know, for certain kinds of use cases and real time for others, right? So starting from batch all the way to continuous streams. Integration is, is really now about you know, being event-based, not some scheduled run. Now, you might have both. But you really need that integration technology that is built for some of this event-based um, kind of real-time requirement. Um, it's primarily document-centric. And by document, I mean JSON. Um, JSON has become kind of the language of the web. Um, and it's very hierarchical. If you just look at a tweet, you'll see the, sort of the hierarchical data from one tweet. Uh, and you wouldn't want to have to convert that into uh, you know, very structured rows and columns you know, using kind of traditional ETL tools. Um, it has to span cloud to cloud, cloud to ground scenarios. So here we like to say, you know, your integration should respect data's gravity and run as close to the data and applications as needed. So if you're running, um, you know, Salesforce to Workday to ServiceNow integration, you're probably going to want to run your integrations in the cloud because all those applications uh, reside in the cloud. Similarly, if you're doing, you know, SAP, Oracle, uh, and then maybe one cloud application in that mix, you probably will want your integration running on premises. It has to be accessible through SOAP and REST services. So there's a lot of talk about microservices and um, API-centric uh, integration. So you want to look for a modern integration platform that is open and accessible through APIs. Um, connectivity, of course, is critical. You know, at SnapLogic, we call these uh, our connectors SNAPs. So you want to have a breadth of um, pre-built uh, intelligent um, connectors. Elasticity is important, right? So you want to you want to plan. Don't have to plan for all the spikiness that uh, that occurs in the modern enterprise. You want to have a system that can scale up and out as needed. Um, so elastic is is one of the advantages of of, of modern you know cloud based uh, technologies. And then ultimately delivered as a service. So this is a long list, um, and you can you know visit snaplogic.com. We have a pretty extensive presentation and overview of some of these capabilities. But ultimately, you know, if you look at those 10 things, the biggest driver that we're seeing for sort of rethinking your integration layer is speed, right? You're looking for agility. You want to get things done quickly. You don't want to have to go and get in line for, you know, a very busy um, IT organization to do your work, right? So self-service is a very hot topic, and how can you um, deliver integration faster so it's, a, it's an on-ramp to the cloud and to big data, not a bottleneck or a roadblock. Uh, Darren, this is Pankaj. Uh, one of the questions the audience are asking is, so uh, in the integration world, so what are the obstacles an organization faces in, just to get started and get their arms uh, to, uh, around with this concept? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. There's a lot of talk right now about digital transformation. Um, you know, that, that, that is often a driver for, for you know, really helping an organization or, or forcing an organization, if you will, to start to rethink their integration layer. Um, so if you, you specifically look at some of the obstacles to get started, I'd say an obstacle would be no clear driver for change, right? If you're if things are just working, you've got sort of an, a, you know, it ain't broke, don't fix it mindset, um, you're probably not going to be, you know, moving, you know, jumping towards more of an iPaaS modern integration uh, platform. Um, what we see is a driver might be, you know, a new CIO, new, you know, an organization that's, that's looking to um, bring new products to market, that's, that's reorganizing in such a way. Um, an obstacle that we see is if you're a very centralized IT organization, 
kind of command and control lockdown, you're probably not going to be um, thinking about IPAC, right? Because you're, you're, you're kind of thinking about things the old way. Um, Self-service might not be um, a term that you uh, appreciate. You know, we, we, some of our customers talk about this idea of citizen integrators, where more people are able to do the integration themselves. Um, but in a well-governed way, it doesn't mean they can run wild and, and you know, bring production systems to their knees with rogue, uh, you know, rogue data flow pipelines. But, you know, so culture, so an obstacle might be not having the right culture for self-service, too centralized and no clear driver for change. Um, and, and if you hear that list, it really has nothing to do with the technology. It has mostly to do with sort of the organizational uh, environment, culture, and sort of appetite for change. So that's where we see speed. speed, 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 right? You want to go faster. You want to be more agile. You want to be, you know, compete more effectively. Um, and that's where integration can really come in. Um, often it's thought of uh, or has historically been thought of, you know, later, right? Sort of the last mile. They think, oh, we're going to move to the cloud. We're going to adopt big data. And then we'll think about our, you know, what do we do with that old ESB or that old ETL system? We, want, we think you should move that up front. Because if you think about that earlier, you're going to be much more successful, you know, in the cloud, in with IoT, with social, whatever the um, sort of modern use case you're trying to uh, address happens to be. So, um, good question. Let's uh, let's look at. I just want to spend a few minutes introducing you to Snap Logic, and then we'll talk about a few of the use cases for iPath. Um, so, Snap Logic, as I mentioned, is founded by Gaurav Dillon, um, the founder, of, uh, former, you know, co-founder and CEO of Informatica. He ran you know, Informatica for 12 years as CEO and, and took that company public in uh, 1999. Um, and he, I think he, he summarizes it pretty well. The dilemma for enterprise IT organizations is that their legacy integration technologies were built before the era of big data, social, mobile, and cloud computing and simply can't keep up. So um, uh, we have a world-class set of investors um, and you know, a world-class, uh, very enterprise-centric uh, set of customers. So, uh, we're very focused on, you know, working with with organizations that have um, sort of a broad set of requirements, and are and are really sort of driven towards um, having this sort of change mindset of of looking at how to be more nimble, how to be more agile. Now, just a quick introduction to you know what we do and how we do it. We we kind of break it into these three areas: being able to connect anything, anytime, anywhere. And you can see the interface of Snap Logic. It's a cloud-based interface uh, where you build and manage um, pipelines. And the execution of these pipelines can occur on-prem, can occur in the cloud, can occur in a very hybrid way. Uh, and we'd be happy to dive more into the architecture uh, in any follow-up discussion. So when we say anything, we think it's important that you know, your integration technology is able to support complex business processes uh, that, that point-to-point -point tools can't handle, right? A lot of you in the call might start with thinking about just, you know, hand coding or some, you know, tool that might have come with, you know, one of the vendor's applications, very point-to-point. -point. You're ultimately, you're, you're, you know, it's ideal, ideal that you think about more of a platform approach to integration. Uh, the SnapLogic platform is JSON-centric, so everything that flows through our pipelines is a JSON document, and it's streaming. Um, and very well suited for some of the more modern data types. So the sort of the three V's of, of variety, velocity, and variety of data. And we have these pre-built connectors that we call SNAPs. Um, some of the core, core connectors, of course, are you know, JDBC. Um, I'll just throw some acronyms at you all. Um, JMS, um, you know, things, things like uh, REST and SOAP. Those, those would be kind of core. And then we have pre-built connectors for systems like Workday and SAP, um, SAP HANA as well. It also, you know, the list goes on and on. Now here is interesting. I think this is where people need to kind of um, get their heads around this, this change, right? Historically, you thought of, you know, I'm looking for low latency, more message-centric integration. I'm going to think about an, uh, an ESB, right? It might have, you know, the, the, the kind of legacy vendor in this category is TIPCO, right? For, for very low latency, um, you, know, you know, came out of financial services, uh, well suited for, for, you know, monolithic systems that you know, upgraded every couple of years. Um, the similarly, up here, you thought about kind of, I, over here I got my ETL tool for analytics, 
um, for for being able to extract, transform, and load data into a you know a target schema, data warehouse, data mart, and that would be Informatica. Now we think this world is you know this is converging, and that's where we really think about you know having one platform that can handle a lot of the low, you know low latency and the high volume kinds of requirements. Um, so that you know SnapLogic is a unified platform for self-service data and application integration that is well suited for multiple you know speeds and volumes uh, of data. And then anywhere um, you know if you're kind of breaking down your requirements list, um, you, you have to kind of open up to the broad set of requirements um, on the you know where my data and applications live. Um, you know, don't think of iPaaS just as cloud to cloud. A lot of uh, organizations or people make that mistake to think, oh, you know, we're not cloudy, we're not there, we're not going to go with an iPaaS, uh, you know, integration platform as a service. Um, you want to, you know, the majority of the use cases we see at SnapLogic are hybrid. In fact, in the majority of our customers are running the execution engine that we call our SnapLex behind the firewall, um, and there might be. Um, Security and governance needs uh, reasons that are driving that, or um, data gravity, right? Um, that you've got a lot of on-prem systems and some cloud, and you're moving more to the cloud over time. So you might be planning to get to be, you know, 100% cloud-centric over time. If you and I were, you know, starting a company tomorrow, Punk Edge, we'd probably, you know, we'd be all in. We'd have no on-prem systems. But you know, we 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 both know well that that's not the reality in today's enterprise uh, IT organization. So uh, let's go ahead. Go ahead. There is one question came from the audience. Is like at a high level, how is the SnapLogic solution uh, uh, better than Apache Camel or Spring integration, etc.? What's the big difference? Come. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're kind of talking about the difference between going with you know just native open source tooling um, and 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 or you know going with more of a platform approach. Um, one of the, the big differences would be in you know the interface of a snap logic is more graphical right it's more of a metadata driven um, a, more of a drag and drop kind of interface that you know you can pull in code you can you know we have things like um, you know a script snap uh, that, that you can put in some of your scripts into the pipeline but it is not a bare metal coding interface so if you're back to that culture point if your team is all about you know coding and developer centric, we may not be the best type of integration platform for you. Um, but as you think towards more of a um, you know a tools based model and want to have something that can shield you from some of these new new underlying technology changes that are occurring you know every day, um, you're going to be looking towards more of a snap logic. So. On the on the Hadoop side, we see there's this sort of interesting time between you know some of some have said it's sort of the hoodies versus the suits, right? You're the very code centric, open source, bare metal um, Apache developers, um, kind of trying to figure out how to work with the data warehouse people that have been managing, governing, and you know delivering reports and you know ad hoc query tools uh, to the business. Um, we're seeing a shift there, uh, and we're seeing more and more. People starting to look to something that, that is going to shield them from underlying changes with more of a metadata-driven approach, uh, and I think that'll come out in, as I go through some of the use cases. So let me um, let me go through these, and we'll see if that answers the questions in, in a little more detail. So four primary use cases we're seeing today: um, hybrid application integration. This is, has been the, the main one, uh, and it continues to be, which is you know best of breed SaaS applications connecting to. Um, on-prem, you know, often financial ERP systems, um, and we see a lot of sort of front office, back office, and I'll talk about that. Uh, a shift to cloud-based data analytics, um, Hadoop, and, and kind of the data lake, and then this, there is a, you know, some organizations that are looking to eliminate technical debt and modernize, kind of moving away from legacy ETL and, um, and ESB technology. So, the first one is this uh, hybrid cloud application integration. So I think a couple of points that are important here. One is multi-point. So you're looking for multi-point integration between cloud applications and on-premises applications for a, for a process that will span, you know, um, you know, that kind of goes beyond one department in, in many cases. So quote to cash, right, front office, back office. Um, um, 
employee onboarding, offboarding, automation. So we see a lot of that in the world of Workday uh, and HR um, management solutions. So you're bringing on a new employee, that's a multi-process, multi-application um, kind of workflow. Right? So when I join a company, I have to be added into multiple systems or when someone leaves that company, they have to be removed. If you could automate that and have a, you know, an integration service that is able to um, do that on some kind of an alert or trigger, um, that is a huge productivity gain. So we, we, we work with a lot of Workday customers that are looking to do that um, you know, and go beyond some of the code. You, you can do these things with writing a lot of code. It's the ongoing maintenance um, benefits that really uh, um, is where the value lies. Now the front office, back office, that's a common one where we see if you're running, you know, working on your Salesforce, for example, and you have your sales reps that are managing opportunities, you know, as they go through stages, um, and you get to the final stage where you close uh, and win an opportunity, you want to kick off an order process in your, um, your financial management system. Or similarly, if an order comes in, um, in, in say SAP, you want to have that information reflected in real time in CRM and not have your people have to, your sales team have to do kind of swivel chair integration, right? Go from, from app to app to app to get the information they need. You want to keep them in one place, which is in the CRM environment. Um, in the ServiceNow world, we see a lot of trouble ticket resolution. So these are, these are multi, um, multi-application, multi-point kinds of um, business processes that, that an integration platform can help you uh, manage uh, and deliver. So here's an example, you know, SnapLogic has a, a number of pre-built um, snaps, we call them for Salesforce. And for Salesforce customers, you might want to be doing operational application integration, or you might want to be doing analytical data integration, right? You know, moving, moving data between Salesforce and other systems in real time is more of a synchronization, um, and, or getting data out of Salesforce into, say, say Wave or some uh, other analytics environment. Um, you, you wanted, those are kind of two different ways that we would work with Salesforce, just as an example. And if you see a SnapLogic demonstration, you see all these, you know, pre-built ways we, we allow you to, without having to um, really go deep and know the, the, the depths of all the different APIs that Salesforce provides, we built, you, we, we built um, these graphical components that you can drag and drop onto the canvas and, and build an orchestration that way. Um, versus again, you know, having to do it you know, programmatically. So the second use case is cloud data warehousing and analytics. So this is really um, happening in a big way. Um, it, it, it started out as very departmental, um, but we're starting to see you know a broader set of a uh, you know a shift of um, data warehousing and analytics uh, infrastructure in the cloud. So you know. Here is the classic loading and aggregation, right? Getting data from point A to point B. Um, you know, so this is where data, you know, being able to do heavy, heavy lifting, he high volume, and, and, and heavy transformations is important in a data integration uh, technology. Um, a combination we see a lot of is customers that have Tableau for data visualization and, and have moved to more Amazon Redshift for, for da the Data Mart data warehouse, and they use SnapLogic to, to feed that new analytics environment. Um, we've also been partnering with a, um, a software provider called Snowflake that has built um, a pretty powerful data warehousing platform on AWS. Um, so just some examples, you know, one of the groups that have really dri you know, driven some of the shift to the cloud analytics uh, has been um, digital marketers, right? Um, they don't want to wait for IT, they want to spin up, they can spin up Redshift very quickly and there already are, you know, many, most marketers today tend to be using tools like Click or, or Tableau for data visualization. So you're empowering those teams with not only self-service analytics, but also self-service um, data integration. Okay, um, and here's an example. Some of the ways we have, you know, kind of pre-built um, interfaces into Redshift for bulk loading, upserting, kind of the, the, the standard sort of CRUD operations, but very specific operations for Redshift that we built as part of our um, set of snaps for Redshift. Now, let's spend a few minutes on the data lake, because this is, um, 
you know, an interesting topic, and I think there's a lot of moving parts here and a lot of um, conversation around, well, what should and will the data lake look, look like relative to, say, our traditional data warehouse? Um, so SnapLogic's role here, and, and really an IPaaS kind of modern approach to data integration, is going to be on the ingestion, um, being able to collect and integrate data from multiple sources, on the transformation, being able to minimize the manual tasks associate, associated with some of the you know, data shaping, if you will, or data preparation, uh, and then ultimately data delivery, you know, feeding data back out to your analytics consumers, um, you know, and sometimes in, you know, in their, their, their traditional format, um, and also feeding maybe some of the downstream data scientists that want to you know, get access to that data quickly. So let me just break that down for you in, in I think, you know, a way that might help um, help you sort of see, see this from an end-to-end -end process perspective. Um, and it also speaks to the question that you, know, you brought up earlier. Um, so a typical data lake that's starting to shape within an organization, you've got all these different systems that you want to feed into this new environment, right? This new sort of HDVS, uh, you know, Spark, Hadoop, might be running Cloudera, um, might be running um, Hortonworks, uh, MapR, you know, systems like that. You want to be able to, you know, feed and land the data there, and that's where the ingestion piece comes in. And here there's a lot of energy around, you know, open source projects like uh, Kafka, Scoop, and Flume. Um, now, the data acquisition side, there's a lot of places you could land. It could be HDVS, could be uh, S3, uh, Microsoft, uh, Azure Blob. Then you've got the data management pieces, and this is, you know, where you get into sort of the, 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 the zoo animals, right, of uh, Pig, and you've got kind of Scala and Python and Spark. There's just so much happening here. Um, and then back out, feeding it, you know, Impala, Hive SQL, Spark SQL, there's a lot going on here in constant, constantly changing environment um, in the world of Apache. Now, where we come in at SnapLogic, where we can, we think we can accelerate this with more of a, um, you know, a pre-built and sort of pre-packaged integration platform that has these, you know, was built for this new world, is we have, you know, you can build pipelines that will stream your data with over 400 connectors to these different systems. We've been dabbling in IoT, doing some things um, to, to be ready for this sort of deluge of, uh, of Internet of Things data that we think is, 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 is here in some cases, but certainly coming um, from sensors, wearables, and devices. So, so a streaming integration, you know, collecting and integrating data from multiple sources, helping you do the sorting, aggregate, joining, merging, transformation by abstracting um, the need to know MapReduce or the need to know Spark. So we have these data flow pipelines that behind the scenes will actually generate Spark code um, or MapReduce. So instead of you having to, you know, remember that point I made about the skills gap, you know, being able to um, operationalize that without having to have the latest developer on site that knows Spark or MapReduce or whatever the next... Uh, um, approach will be. And then feeding the data back out to, might be directly to your analytics users or to these Lakeshore data marks that could be, you know, in the cloud or, or on-prem. So, so I just wanted to sort of show you that sort of life as many are seeing it and life as we're, we're starting to see it evolve to with uh, an integration technology from, uh, you know, from SnapLog. Darren, uh, one of the questions from audience is like, Obviously, and our customers as well, like data security and privacy are always a concern, right, for enterprise integration. So can you speak a little bit about data governance and how with IPaaS and SnapLogic solution? Yeah, so, so this is great because, you know, just a year or so ago, you know, people were talking about this world and very excited about all the, you know, sort of new initiatives coming around, you know, Uzi and Ambari and, um, you know, Ranger. I mean, there's just so much happening you know, below below the um, the surface in the in the you know Hadoop world. Um, what we're seeing now is again kind of bringing together the sort of the, the suits and the hoodies, if you will. Um, there's a lot of the conversation, a lot of the things we've learned in the enterprise data warehousing world. Those lessons are starting to be um, um, talked about in this new world of the data lake. Right. I think there's a lot of, you know, everyone sort of calmed down a little bit, and now we're talking about, okay, this sounds great, but, you know, what about governance, right, the G word? 
how do we deal with um, access and you know security and you know things like you know lineage um, these are all you know data discovery is, is becoming a you know important conversation so this is this is exciting that this, these are now topics. It's, it's a, I think, a signal of the, the maturity that's coming to this, this world. Hadoop is now 10 years old. Um, so with, you know, with Snap Logic, we've spent a lot of time being able to support Kerberos, for example. Uh, and this has come from customers like Capital One um, that, that are you know, running Snap Logic you know, as part of a key component to their um, data lake infrastructure. Um, so if you're going to be you know, part of a you know a big financial services uh, institution uh, analytics environment, you better bet you better know that you know security, privacy, access control, these are you know a huge component to their new data lake infrastructure. So we've written a couple of white papers. You can find them on the SnapLogic white uh, web uh, website if you go to um, SnapLogic.com/resources. We worked with Mark Madsen on a couple of white papers on how to build a data lake, how to think about security. What are the you know what are the sort of lessons from the old world that we could take to the new world? Um, so I don't have all the answers, but we're definitely thinking a lot about this, and um, you're going to see more and more from us in this area, sort of metadata management, um, data discovery, respecting kind of the, the the new world of and expectations around data governance and security. Thank you. I think the you know the big the big point here. Um, and the conversation we're having with a lot of organizations is kind of, can we go from this to this, right? And we call it Hadoop for humans. Um, we get that you can code up, you know, pretty much anything. We can kind of go all in on some of the new open source technologies out there. But we are seeing a maturity where organizations want to scale. They want to get the benefits of, you know, why they're making these investments in the first place. Might be some new analytics they're, they're moving towards, um, becoming more predictive in nature. Um, and really rethinking how they've, you know, the, 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 the analytics infrastructure that, that, that is required, we think there's, there's this more of a desire to, to build more of this sort of metadata approach, drag and drop, do some of the, the heavy lifting in a, in a more graphical way. Um, so that is the, the, the shift of the data lake, and we could have a whole, you know, session just on that topic, and, and we have a number of experts um, that are willing and ready to discuss it. Um, the last use case I wanted to talk about um, is, is, you know, it's kind of the, the end of the spectrum where you want to replace your integration platforms, eliminate technical debt, reduce some of the spending, and find ways to move off of um, kind of those legacy ETL and, and, um, uh, and enterprise service bus technologies. Um, and a primary driver for this we're seeing is, is uh, self-service. So we're seeing kind of new types of users come into the enterprise, right? There's citizen integrators, there's ad hoc integrators, and there's you know, the classically trained advanced uh, integrators um, in the organization. And um, Gartner wrote a white paper called CIO to Call to Action, Shake Up Your Integration Strategy to, ena to Enable Digital Transformation. And it actually featured uh, a really great case study from our customer at Adobe. Um, Adobe has now over 400 users, you know, they call ad hoc citizen integrators. Um, they're just doing a lot of different things with SnapLogic's platform, and they're on that sort of that um, this journey where they came to us looking to to maybe even build their own iPaaS, and and they've really you know, standardized on SnapLogic across the enterprise for a number of different use cases. So um, I want to just wrap up to just to conclude, and then uh, make sure we have some time for some other questions, um, as well as a discussion around you know Synergy. Um So why do customers choose SnapLogic? So the four reasons, um, we're seeing this convergence, this desire for a unified data and application integration platform. I like this quote where, you know, unnecessarily segregated application and data integration efforts lead to counterproductive practices and escalating deployment costs. Um, two is this shift to self-service, right, where, you know, you can benefit from having a cloud-based designer um, drag and drop, you know, interface for building these reusable, you know, patterns and, and um, and pipelines. Yeah. And you see an Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Jared, uh, a, a question from the audience is like, uh, it's good. Uh, I think your presentation is giving good overview of the IPAS. And assuming like the organization is doing that and uh, implemented the first version of your solution, IPAS solution. Uh, the challenge is like, what are the uh, obstacles or challenges organization faces 
uh, once the initial implementation is done because the data sources and the need for the data is growing going so if you can speak up earlier you talked about how did the organization get started and now okay, after the initial implementation it's not done so what are the remaining what are the challenges organization should be aware of well I think the um, some of these are, are, are pretty classic but um, you know have this vision of have a big vision but start small right so think big start small um, and prove out the value, right? You know, Adobe didn't just get to um, 400 users overnight. We worked with them to show, you know, the return on investment to, to and the compare and contrast to how this, you know, the, the, what the cost would have been um, with, with legacy tools. So, you know, having this ongoing discussion around, you know, what kind of ROI have we seen and how do we find more use cases. Um, bringing in, you know, the use case might initially be hybrid, you know, cloud application integration. If I think about Box here on this slide, um, they got it really quickly. They were very cloud centric. Um, they were able to do in you know a night and day. You know they were able to kind of build in four or five hours what they couldn't do with their legacy ESB vendor um, in 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 months and even in a year. Um, so with them, you know we solved the first set of needs and then we've expanded. Um, and you know we're working with Box now around what they're doing around cloud analytics and Hadoop, and we're just finding more and more use cases. So you're not done. You 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 need to kind of continue to to sort of prove it out and 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 get get to the you know the the, the stakeholders, right? The people that are running Salesforce or Workday, if that's your use case. How can you show that you've driven more adoption and, and be able to expand um, the return on your application investment? or the people that are using you know, the analytics tools downstream. Get back to them and show, you know, what else do they need? How can you help them get more value out of their Tableau investments, get, you know, multi-source kinds of, uh, you know, analytics that they couldn't have gotten to um, or would have taken them much longer to do with uh, traditional ETL tools. So that would be my answer is, is kind of continue to build the business case and show the value and then, and then find more use cases um, going forward. We do think there's, you know, there is a desire. You have to modernize, right? But some of the, you know, a lot of the vendors out there sound the same, but they actually have quite different technology stacks. So dig a little deeper in your evaluation. Um, look, you know, architecture matters. You need to look for scale out. You need to, you know, to look for some of these things that I talked about around, you know, JSON centric. These are like a few clicks down in the evaluation, but they're really going to be important over time. Um, you know, the ability to run in the cloud and on-prem and in a hybrid way, for example, um, might not be obvious or vendors might say it, but they need to prove that out in the proof of concept. Um, now, connectivity is, is kind of table stakes. So, you know, of course your integration vendor needs to have strong connectivity, but um, dig deeper here and look for, you know, also can you build your own connectors with an SDK um, and how strong are the REST and SOAP um, types of um, core interfaces because you might not need a connector for every single SaaS application if you have a very strong REST um, capabilities, for example. So that's a, a introduction to a number of use cases. Is another question? Yeah, Darren, there is another question came out. Uh, so in terms of elasticity, it's uh, great, but uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, SnapLogic or iPaaS solutions in terms of scalability and performance? You already have the big data and the data is flowing between here and there, and now we are putting SnapLogic in between. So what's the impact on scalability and performance, if any? Yeah, so... So we've seen some pretty amazing um, you know, performance numbers, and we could certainly share them, but they're obviously going to depend on the use case um, and some of the underlying systems you're, you're trying to connect to. Um, but usually in, in, um, in evaluation, we need to show you know, that the, the performance is there. Now, you know, some people might think, oh, you know, this is a, you know, a cloud-centric architecture, um, so how could the performance be there? Um, the, the, the important point to note is that we don't store or cache your data in our cloud. So you're really just designing the, the workflow in the cloud. The runtime execution can be on-prem 100%. So if you're doing you know, a heavy load from, say, you know, Teradata to AWS, the only limitation there might be in the ability for AWS to, to ingest, right? 
Um, but if you're doing, say, on-prem, you know, SAP to, uh, you know, an Oracle database, you're doing on-prem to on-prem, there's no hop up to a SnapLogic cloud and back down. You're just building it and managing it and monitoring in the cloud, but the runtime execution of that data flow is going to be behind your firewall. So the limitations would typically be on the endpoints themselves in terms of performance. If you're doing, you know, Salesforce Workday, there might be some, you know, uh, limitations on what those SaaS applications can handle in terms of volumes. Now, in terms of scale out, this is a real advantage that we can, we can scale across multiple nodes in a cluster. So SnapLogic's uh, execution engine, we have something called a Hadoopplex, which can, which can actually run across multiple nodes. It's, it's a managed Yarn application, and you can scale across multiple nodes in a cluster. So we'll, really well suited for Hadoop and Spark, um, as well as you know this cloud-centric architecture, this sort of web scale that you need uh, that you're building towards in IT. Thank you. Uh, just another question, uh, just like another uh, earlier question where the audience were comparing Apache, uh, Camel, and Spring. Another question came up about: uh, Can you talk a little bit about uh, uh, SnapLogic uh, and MuleSoft? solution sure sure there's a lot of vendors out there um, you know and each each one has has some sort of historical roots um, you know SnapLogic has an advantage in that we, we we built a completely new platform in the last you know three to five years so we, we you know the company's been around longer than our technology um, you know kind of, you might have heard of us before but we, we started and built an enterprise grade platform um, called the SnapLogic Elastic Integration Platform that we launched in 2013. Um, we're now in the leaders quadrant from a Gartner perspective on IPaaS, um, and we do tend to compete with you know, you know, multiple vendors because we cut across these historically segregated segments, right? So we compete against MuleSoft when the need is for more application-centric. Um, you know, they're coming from a EAI or you know enterprise service bus um, legacy. We'll compete against Informatica, you know, because they're coming from more of an ETL data-centric uh, legacy. Um, you know, so we'll, we have the, the great pleasure of competing against both because we do have a converged platform that is built for multiple use cases. So MuleSoft might be, you know, might be a better fit if you're very programmatic, um, have more of a, you know, ESB uh, mindset. You want to have kind of a um, more of an on-prem messaging-centric technology for, for developers. SnapLogic's a better fit for um, that self-service, ease of use um, set of requirements that, that also have a lot of data analytics uh, infrastructure uh, needs. Hopefully that answers the question. And we, we could certainly go deeper into a lot of the different vendors out there. There's some, there's some good vendors, some good choices, and the important thing is that you're making the right choice for your, uh, your use cases. So that, um, that, that wraps up what we had prepared. Um, you know, we think, you know, if you go to SnapLogic, you can, you can, you know, to the point of competition, you can download the Magic Quadrant and see what, um, you know, Gardner says. Just to give you a few things to think about, you know, three areas to focus on. Um, digital transformation, you know, that's, that's, that's a real driver for iPaaS. Cloud adoption, of course, is a driver. Um, and then modernizing your analytics infrastructure um, is another driver for, for you to, to consider adopting an, you know, a modern hybrid integration platform and moving away from some of your legacy ETL, you know, enterprise service bus thinking. So with that, I will, um, you, can, you can contact us here. You, we have some open for more discussion. Um, but I also want you, Pankaj, to uh, kind of maybe take us through a little bit on Synerzip. Thanks, Darren. Uh, thanks, Darren, for the great presentation and to introduce us to the concept of iPaaS. I'm sure our audience uh, got a little bit with more knowledge and the flow and the need and uh, why it's an uh, upcoming thing and why organizations need to uh, get a jump start on the concept. I encourage everyone to enter their questions in the chat box, chat box now. While questions are coming in, I will quickly go over the synergy of slides. Uh, uh, Darren, if you can go to the slide before. Yeah. Uh, if you have any questions about this presentation or about Synergy, uh, please feel free to contact me. My contact uh, is information is uh, listed here on the slide. Next slide, please. 
So let me give a brief uh, uh, overview of our Synergy. Uh, with Synergy, we work as an extension to your present development team. You get a dedicated team of software engineers fully versed in agile development methodology and cutting edge technologies. Our team works directly under your control on your product roadmap with reduced risk and cost. Optionally, our architects and leads can work on site with you to ease the start of the offshore development project. Uh, as I said, uh, the key thing is like we, uh, if you are VP engineering and you have a technology skills gap, you're trying to fill or scale up your organization, uh, or Synergy is the, uh, can definitely offer that. The key thing is we don't have our own IP, so all the IP we develop is your IP. Go to the next slide, please. Just as I, I, I realize this is a pretty busy slide, but over last 11 and 12 years, we've been working over 100 uh, plus clients uh, from many different domains, from health, uh, digital health, health fintech, uh, education, enterprise integration, uh, oil and uh, industry, as, uh, as you can see, a wide variety of uh, clients from different domains. Our clients are 100% referenceable. So check the uh, client testimonials on our websites. And now, uh, just to give our next uh, webinar is scheduled for August 16th. The topic will be Agile 2016 Conference Top 10. The presenters will be Heyman Elhans, who is the CEO of Synergy, and Vinayak Jobekar, who is the CTO of Synergy. They will be attending this conference uh, and then we'll be presenting their findings in the, our next webinar on August 16th. So please do look out and sign up uh, for our uh, next month's webinar. Uh, let me see if we have any unanswered questions at this point. Uh, one question that, uh, uh, so let me, Darren, now I think I'll just go through the, some of the questions that are coming in. So one of the questions that came up is like in the SNAP logic solutions, uh, performance uh, issues, are there some built-in tools uh, which can help diagnose uh, or de uh, detect the performance bottlenecks within the entire integration solution? Yeah, so with SNAP logic, we have um, a set of uh, dashboards that you can, um, you can monitor the health of the environment from um, you know, from a runtime perspective, you can also look at you know the CPU um, and kind of memory usage from your the, each node of your Snapplex. So you know the the way SnapLogic is designed, we separated the we separated the design time from the runtime. So in the in the cloud interface, that's where you can you can monitor, you can manage, you can build and develop your integration flows, which we call pipelines. And we have a dashboard with a, a lot of advanced um, telemetry that tells you kind of how, you know the performance of the system. Um, you can also look at kind of how things are are flowing in real time through a pipeline uh, and see if there's any bottlenecks or any improvements you can make to the design of that pipeline. Okay. Uh, the other question came up, and I think this is uh, generally the case for enterprise customers. Uh, one of the question is, we understand integration, we uh, understand the uh, need for it, but why as a service is the SNAP logic solution, can that be completely behind the firewalls, on-premise? Well, I mean, again, this speaks to the how we architected um, Snap logic, and um, you know, people think that oh, this is only for cloud to cloud or only for cloud um, use cases. That's not 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 the case um, because the so as you build a, a pipeline, which is the definition of of what it is you want it to do. It could be you know um, source data from here, join it up, map it, you know, um, and feed it into something like a, an analytics you know a data warehouse from um, Oracle, or it could be a data, you know, database, or it could be, um, you know, back into say something like Amazon Redshift. You design it in SnapLogic's interface, drag, drop, you know, connect, if you will. The the runtime, you then decide where do I want to run this pipeline. 
Um, and it's a late binding decision. So you can actually, you know, from a pick list, I can say, I want to run this pipeline on a Windows, um, you know, or a Linux uh, Snapplex that's running in, in my data center. Or I, I want to run it in my, you know, cloud infrastructure. I want to run it on AWS or, um, you know, I, wanna, I can run it natively in a Cloudera um, CDH uh, environment. It's late binding, so you can decide as you build a pipeline where it should run. And, and then it sends the instruction. So once it's running, it could be on a trigger or a schedule or just you know press play. Um, it sends the instructions to that Snapplex to then process, execute, you know, actually you know deliver the payload. So um, it's it's really important that it's metadata in the cloud. So so the definition, but the runtime execution of that pipeline can be wherever you want it to be. And, and, and that gives you a lot of flexibility in your design. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in, you know, kind of building for today, but also building for, you know, the next, you know, three to five years as more of your systems do move to the cloud. You want to have an integration platform that does respect data's gravity and will run as close to the data as need be. You don't want to get locked into something that's only for on-prem and then let's go with something for only, on, you know, in the cloud later. You want to ultimately, um, you know, build for hybrid. Um, and that's that's what we built with SnapLogic. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, Darren, is like, are there cases uh, where the SnapLogic uh, solution does not uh, fit, or are there any technologies where the SnapLogic solution won't fit? Um, I mean, we're, if if you're doing. Uh, I mean, I guess it would depend on the use case, right? So we talked about four use cases in, the, in today's presentation, um, hybrid cloud application integration, you know, cloud analytics, data lake, uh, and then kind of replacing legacy, you know, ETL, ESB. That gives you a lot of runway for, you know, a number of different use cases. Um, I would say if you're just doing a massive data migration, um, you, you might want to do, you know, choose some sort of replication tool. Um, it, but you know, it's the ongoing synchronization, the sort of the the ongoing integration. That's where you know something like a Snap Logic comes in. Um, if you're doing mainframe, you know everything. You know, we we recently built a Cobol Copybook Snap with our SDK. Um, but you know, we may not be the best uh, you know integration tool if you're just doing mainframe kind of things and you're kind of old school in your IT infrastructure. We're really well suited for sort of that modernized you know modernizing. Um, uh, IT infrastructure, and, and we're working with typically a lot of enterprise architects that are kind of building the blueprint for the future, and and, and seeing that we fit in much better than their legacy uh, their legacy tools. Okay, I think that was the uh, last question for today. And all the other people, like uh, if you have other uh, more questions, please do shoot it uh, to uh, me, and I'll definitely get back to you. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thanks uh, Darren to you for a great presentation and uh, I'm looking forward to you and our audience in our future webinars.